On the last episode of Soap, Ingrid revealed herself as Corinne's mother, which means Jessica is really Corinne's aunt and Chester her uncle, since Randolph, her father, is her Aunt Jessica's brother. Ingrid has sworn to destroy the tapes. Meanwhile, at the Campbells, Danny no longer has to run around in disguise, since Elaine Lefkowitz has spoken to her father in Danny's behalf. Bert, on the other hand, has become totally consumed with finding his son Peter's murderer, and is acting more and more peculiar. Having found a hair in Peter's bathtub, Bert spends a lot of time yanking hairs from people's heads trying to match it. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. Can't seem to find anything here. What you say her name was? Corinne Tate. Corinne Tate. I do not believe this. You make a person turn over their eulery at totally <laughs> barbaric customs, which may I say we do not have in Sweden. And then when they do hand over their eulery to the police, yet it disappears. <laughs> Got it. Corinne Tate. I was following a Corinne, not Tate. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> I wish I'd not to be here for an execution when you screw up somebody's name and figure it out after they've melted in your killing chair, you dumb barbarian. All right, let's get this over with. Ben, 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 look who's here, the glorious Tate. So, well, my dear lady, it seems some misfortune has befallen you. I've taken your Corinne, and soon they'll take your life. Ha! Listen to you. You had better oh, watch. Be quiet, you boring, stupid man. You all are getting what you deserve. <laughs> Jessica Tate in Yale. <laughs> I adore it. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Tate, if you'll just give me your personal possessions. Any jewelry. Don't give him the jewelry, Jessica. She has to. Now, Tinkler, this is absurd. Why can't she keep her jewelry? Mr. Tate. Tinkler, you're going to pay for this, I swear it, what you have done to my family in the last few days. Oh, my... darling, it's all right. It's probably a rule of some kind so that the less fortunate prisoners won't feel jealous. I mean, if I went in there wearing my sapphires and they were wearing nothing but, well, let's say their costume jewelry, bound to cause resentment. Let's <laughs> move right over here. I need to take a couple of pictures. Chester, be sure and help Billy with his homework now. Uh, yes. All right, we just slip this right over your head there. Let it, uh, 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 uh could, could you just, uh, that's lovely. <laughs> All right, now, just, uh, watch the birdie here. All uh, right, now, if you'll just turn to the right. All the way to the right. Sheriff, I know my face, and believe me, you do not want a profile. <laughs> Jessica, it's a rule they have to take a profile shot. Yeah, that's right, Mrs. Tate. We always do it that way. You've seen those pictures hanging in the post office? If my face is going to hang in a public place like the post office, well, I'm afraid you're going to have to use Ben Evans, our family photographer. He is wonderful. I mean, that man can make anybody look marvelous. You know, last year he took a picture of Chester, and I'm telling you, if Cary Grant ever saw that, he would never make another movie. <laughs> was rather good. <laughs> Mr. Tate. Mm. Darling, just let the man take the picture his way, please. Here we go now. <laughs> All right, got it. Excuse me, let's go now. No. Oh, now, come on, none of that. Uh, Tinkler, could we have a moment alone, please? Well, no, I don't know. Oh, Tinkler. Well, look, it's against policy. Tinkler, for God's sake, she's not Ma Barker. <laughs> okay, but just one minute. Chester, I'm scared. You'll be out by morning, Jess. I've never been in jail before. Actually, I've never spent the night alone. I know, darling. I didn't do it, Chester. You know that I didn't do it. Of course not, Jess. Of course not. Don't worry about a thing. We'll get the very best lawyer. But, 
Chester, what about that movie? <laughs> what movie, Jess? You know, that cowboy movie, The Oxblood Incident. Oxbow. Right. And they hung Henry Fonda, I think it was, or was that Kirk Douglas? But anyway, I mean, just as his neck snapped, well, the deputy came running up and said, Oops, that's the wrong man. But I mean, of course, it was too late by then, because there was old poor old Henry Fonda all bug-eyed with his tongue hanging out. <laughs> Innocent, but dead. Yes, it was just the movie. But Chester, where do you think they get those movie stories from? They get them from real life. Uh, Jessica, you won't hang. Well... If I do, and they do make a movie of it, Chester promised me that you will try to retain some control, because I have a feeling, I mean, I just have this awful feeling. They're thinking about having Shelley Winters play me. <laughs> See, I was thinking of someone like Catherine Deneuve. She's attractive enough, or it could make a wonderful musical. You see, Barbara Streisand could play me, and Robert Redford could play Chester. <laughs> out of the basement? No. Mom, he needs help. He doesn't need help. Oh, come on, Ma. He's been acting really strange. He sleeps down there in the basement. Ma, yesterday he goes out and buys 200 Bunsen burners. He needed them for an experiment. 200? They were on sale. Oh. <laughs> Mom, he should see a psychiatrist. Look, the man's son was murdered. That's an enormous shock. There's bound to be some reaction to it. He'll get over it. Mom, last night he told me that sometimes he thinks he's invisible. He was joking with you. Invisible. <laughs> he was serious, Mom. He told me that sometimes he can walk through a room and nobody sees him. He says it helps him greatly with his detective work. And you believed him? He was joking with you. Look, this is all a reaction to grief. There is no reason in the world to worry about Bert. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> well, what happened? No, I think I mixed the wrong chemicals. <laughs> they, they were supposed to fall in slightly. Right. This is getting too dangerous. Unless, of course, someone tampered with my experiment. <laughs> the, the police. Oh, that Tinkler, he's so jealous of me, it's incredible. Me and my work. <laughs> the other day, I was at police headquarters. I asked to see a hair from Corinne. They threw me out. Look at the girl. You've got to stop doing that. Mary. Oh, my God. Mary, Mary, let me look at you. You're just plain as ever. Oh, my God. Ingrid. Think this is your husband? Interesting man. Are you a chimney sweep? No, he's Al Jolson. Take your sons. How nice. One is a frou frou. And one plays with dolls. Hey, uh, Miss Ingrid, whatever you are, get out of here. I always thought your first husband was a horror. This one is worse. <laughs> but now I have a wonderful announcement to make. My lovely, beautiful daughter, Corinne, has been released. I knew it. I knew she didn't do it. That was the theory I was working on. I went up to the police, stole my notes, too. Even better than that, Jessica has been arrested. Isn't that lovely? What? Uh, Jessica didn't do it. She's got red hair. Not only is the man filthy, he's also an idiot. <laughs> what are you doing, you stupid louse? I'm going to test this. A person comes into your house, you two loud hairs. You dirty, stupid, crazy man. I want you to leave now. I would be delighted, but I will be back. I'm not finished with this family. I won't rest until I've destroyed every last one of you. Ha! <laughs> well... 
Obviously, the police have no idea what they're doing. I gotta get back to work. That drink. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I hope the fire's out down there. <laughs> Mom. I know. He needs help. <laughs> Real nice. A boy, Kava. Who did this? The new man? Yes, Mr. Lefkowitz. Keep him. He's our Rembrandt. <laughs> so. So, 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 so. <laughs> you are Danny. Yes, sir. Danny Dallas. Yes, sir. My daughter tells me I shouldn't kill you. <laughs> I've grown very fond of you. So, how did you two happen to meet? Well, you see, I was, uh. Well, it was, uh. Well, you see, what it was, was I was, uh... He's cute, so there should never be a fundraiser. <laughs> no, forget it, what difference does it make? You met, right? Right. I met my wife in our bakery. There was one rye bread. We both reached for it, and I let her have it. <laughs> you have no idea how much that rye bread cost me. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Sally. Right. Right. Fine. No, kill him. <laughs> okay, have a nice weekend, Sam. <laughs> so where was I? Uh, you were, uh, you were talking about some rye bread and how you and your wife... Uh, did I tell that story? What a boring story. Make a note. I gotta stop telling that story. <laughs> okay, Ellen, sweetheart, be a good girl and let Daddy talk to your friend here in private. No. This is it, darling. I don't care. Okay, honey, but what do I have to do to get you to leave? Buy me a present. What do you want? A fox coat. Okay, a fox coat. <laughs> Take a note. Oh, Daddy, silver. A good one, no crummy skin. Uh -huh. yeah, just like a mother. They get out of a chair. It cost me ten grand. <laughs> get the fur from Bernstein. He owes me for killing his partner. <laughs> Your mother need a coat? No. No. Oh! Danny Dallas. Yes, sir. You still owe us a favor, you know. I know. I know. But I can't kill a man, so if you're gonna ask me to shoot somebody, you might as well gun me down right now. No killing, no killing. This is a non-violent favor. <laughs> what is that? Is that a finger? <laughs> Tell Gomez I know him 20 years. He kills a man, I take his word for it. So what is it? A finger! I never saw anything so disgusting in my life. You wanna see? No. It's a favor. It's a favor you want me to do. Can't tell you now. But if I'll tell you, then the time is right. Meanwhile, you don't have to dress up anymore. So go home, enjoy yourself, and I'll be in touch. Thank you, Mr. Lefkowitz. Hey, don't thank me. Thank you, Lee. I think I already did. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you. I do. Hey, listen, I really appreciate everything and so long. Hold it. Where are you going? Home. Wrong. Hey, now look, Elaine, oh, fun's Daddy. fun. Now, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I said, Elaine, I, I gotta get some rest. You haven't let me sleep in days. Forget it. You're coming with me. <sighs> Upstairs. <laughs> Elaine, I, I'm exhausted. I, I can't move. I can. <laughs> He's a nice boy. It's too bad. Wait till he finds out the favor is he's got to marry my daughter. He'd be better off dead. <laughs> Who is it? It's me. Oh, John. Do you know what time it is? Where the hell have you been? What? Our one night together. You know what my schedule is like. I mean, I, I've been waiting for hours. Now we hardly have any time. Walter, my mother has been arrested. Oh, wonderful. We finally get a night together and your mother gets arrested. I suppose now you're not in the mood. <laughs> what do you think? This is some big thrill for me? I love running over here in the middle of the night for three minutes once a week. I'm sorry, hey, I just... you have a morning press conference, I don't see you. Your wife gives a dinner party, I don't see you. 
your kid plays a sweet potato in the Thanksgiving play and I don't see you. But my mother gets arrested and you complain? Eunice, I'm sorry. I am. I mean it. Come on. Forgive me, huh? I'm a little upset. I, I got this today. Read it. I know all about you and Eunice Tate. Keep the pictures I have from the press will cost $50,000. Walter, what are you going to do? Nothing. It's a crackpot scheme to get the money. I mean, what could they possibly have pictures of? You know how careful we've been? I've personally checked out every hotel room. I mean, do you think I get us rooms facing a brick wall because I like them? <laughs> oh, Eunice, I guarantee you there's absolutely no way anyone could have ever gone, oh, my God, Atlanta. What? Atlanta. Atlanta, remember? Atlanta? We had to stay over at the last minute. I didn't have time to check the place out. It was that, that little place, the, 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 the peach, peach tree. tree. Oh, my God, that was the night you heard noises on the roof. I said it was birds. Birds, you said it was squirrels throwing peach pits. What are you talking about, squirrels throwing peach pits? Squirrels can't throw. Well, then, now that's what I said. But you said, yes, squirrels can throw peach pits. <laughs> well, it's ridiculous. I mean, nobody was there that night. Nobody saw us that night. Nobody took pictures. What am I worrying about? Walter. That was the night we played that game. What game? Walter. Oh, I can't believe we did that, you know. What? Where you dressed up as the Roman gladiator and I was the slave you just bought. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you tied me. I'd better pay. <laughs> and that's actually what you do for a living? I mean, you're a... Uh... Okay. Oh, my goodness. Uh, see, I, I thought they only had them in Europe. And you do it with strangers? Kind of hard to charge a friend. No. And, and so a customer was dissatisfied and turned you in? No, no, it was a cop. You mean a cop was dissatisfied and turned you in? No. Well, let me ask you one more question. My God, this is fascinating. You never get to ask questions like this. Okay, Bebe, you out on bail, Mrs. Tate. Your lawyer's here. Oh. <laughs> Benson? Well, Benson, you're not a lawyer. Shh. They wouldn't let me in to see you, so I told them I was your lawyer. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm with the firm of Honeycutt, Pringle, Kaplan, and Black. I'm black. black. <laughs> well, you look like a lawyer. Actually, you look very nice as a lawyer. I I'll bet you could be one. I smell bacon. That's because I brought breakfast. Oh, Benson, look at this. Blueberry muffins and Canadian bacon. <gasps> Grapefruit. Well, oh. I know you couldn't eat the food in here. Mm. What do you want for dinner? Oh, you know what I would love for dinner? What? Meatballs and spaghetti. Well, that's a problem, see, because the sauce will run in the cake. Oh, right. And then you couldn't explain that. Yeah, especially to Mr. Tate. The briefcase is his. Oh. <laughs> Morning, darling. Oh, hello, dear. What's this? Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I... He's uh, my uh, lawyer, Chester. Yes, uh, Honeycutt, Pringle, Kaplan, and Black. He's Black. <laughs> well, I guess you won't be needing me. Uh, no, 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 no. He's not a lawyer. He's a butler. Benson, why are you posing as a lawyer? Because I couldn't get in to see her as a butler. <laughs> huh? Carry on, counselor. Uh, Jessica, this is Mr. Franklin. He was Corinne's lawyer. Hopefully, he'll be taking your case. How do you do, Mrs. Delighted. Tate? Delighted. Uh, I would like to ask you just a few simple questions, if it's all right. Certainly. <laughs> Naturally, the first question I must ask you is, did you kill Peter Campbell? Well, do I look like the sort of woman who would kill somebody? <laughs> it's, it's just that I have to hear the answer in your own words, Mrs. Tate. I see. <laughs> so, uh, would you mind giving me the answer? I guess not. Fine. <laughs> Would you give me the answer? I forgot the question. <laughs> did you kill Peter Campbell? Oh, yes. You did? No, yes, I remember the question. I don't know how you could ask such a question. Did I kill Peter Campbell? <laughs> did you? Did I what? Did you kill Peter Campbell? Well, of course not, silly. <laughs> Sheriff Tinkler found the gun that 
killed Peter Campbell in your lingerie drawer. Now, do you know how it got there? I guess I put it there. So the gun is yours? Oh, yes. Yes, Miss Hicks. I gave it to her for the nights that I was out of town as a precaution. I don't like having it. Do you know, once I was searching for a particular pair of panties, and the gun went off, shot a hole through the drawer, went right out in the hall, and lodged in a portrait of my grandfather and put a hole in his head. Uh, which some people maintained he always had. <laughs> Mrs. Tate, if we could go on. Now, the knife that killed Peter Campbell was found in your jewelry box. Do you know how it got there? No, how? I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking you. Uh, did, did you put it there? Not that I remember. So you might have put it there. No, she didn't, I assure you. Well, now, Chester, I don't know. You remember the time I put your shoes in the dishwasher? <laughs> Sometimes her mind is on uh, something else. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. <laughs> Mrs. Tate, had do you know who might have seen you sleeping in your guest room the night of the murder? No, who? Do you think anybody saw you? Well, I don't know, Mr. Franklin. I mean, uh, who would want to see me sleeping? Fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Tate. I think I've got all the information oh, I need. So nice to have met you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, would you like some breakfast? before you go. Uh, not for me. Oh, well, come again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tate, if I could speak with you for a moment. Uh, Mr. Tate, let me put this as candidly as possible. Now, your wife, as we know, had the motive. The murder weapons were found in her room with her fingerprints all over them, and she had no alibi for that night. Plus which the judge, as you can see from the astronomical bail that he has set, hates rich people. Well, what you're saying is it'll be a difficult case. Mr. Tate, Clarence Darrow in his prime, arguing this case against a mute prosecutor <laughs> with a jury of Mrs. Tate's relatives, with you sitting as the judge, could not possibly hope to win. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do have a career to think about. I, I cannot take this case. Uh, well, can't you recommend something? Yes, plead guilty. It'll save you a lot of time and money, and the outcome will be the same. I'm sorry. What did he say, darling? It's an open and shut case. You're not to worry about anything. I'm not worried. I'm innocent. Will Ingrid really destroy all the Tates and Campbells? Or is this just some Swedish bragging? Does a blackmailer really have compromising pictures of Eunice and the congressman? Or is it merely a school chum playing a practical joke? Will Danny marry Elaine? Or will he decide he'd rather be killed? If the case against Jessica was argued against a mute prosecutor with Chester as the judge, would Jessica really be found guilty? And if she is, will her worst fear be realized? Will Shelley Winters play her in the film? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of Soap. In last week's episode of Soap, Jody told Mary that Bert needs help because now he thinks he's invisible. Mary told Jody Bert doesn't need help, he was just joking, whereupon Bert almost blew up the house. Mary now agrees with Jody. Meanwhile, an attorney, after meeting with Jessica, told Chester he couldn't win Jessica's case if Chester was the judge and the Tate family was the jury. He told Chester to plead guilty. Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of So. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells, and this is Soap.
Hi. Is I never give. Oh. No, what I want is... Money, you people. What's the matter? Don't you have enough stained glass? <laughs> Tim! Corinne, she knows me. We're friends. Oh, you're that priest. <laughs> Father Timothy Flotsky. We have some of you people in Sweden, you know. Well, we get around. I always hated them. Such an exclusive bunch, always going on about heaven as if they were the only ones who could go there. <laughs> the church doesn't really believe Corinne, that... I have to go out, sweetheart. Uh, give Mama a kiss. Mm, I guess it's safe leaving. The only good thing about you priests is a mother doesn't have to worry about her daughter with you. <laughs> so that's your new mother? Yeah. I like the old one better. <laughs> so, listen, Corinne. I came to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yes. I'm going away for a while on a retreat. Where? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, please? I can come visit you. No, you can't come visit. You can't visit a retreat. Anyway, it's on top of a mountain. So there are roads up mountains. It's a Canadian mountain. There are no roads. Please take me with you. Corinne, it's a religious retreat I'm going on. It's for priests with problems. What problems? You. Me? Yes. I think about you all the time. That's wonderful. No, it's not. I'm not supposed to be thinking about you at all. I told my superior and he told me to go away and meditate. I'm praying it'll work. <laughs> Please take me with you, Tim. You're all I have. What are you talking about? You've got two fathers and two mothers. I hate my parents. Which ones? All of them. Oh, come on. You don't hate them. I do. Please don't leave me, Tim. I have to. Well, when will you be back? Tim? Hopefully never. What are you talking about? If it works, if I'm able to forget about you, Corinne, then they'll transfer me and make me stay away. Until you're too old to tempt me, and I'm too old to care. <laughs> Goodbye, Corinne. You mean I might never see you again? Oh, Tim. Oh, don't cry, Corinne. Please, I can't deal with crying now. That Swedish lady took all my energy. <laughs> Just say goodbye. Tim. If we're never going to see each other again, can we at least kiss goodbye? Come on, Corinne, be serious. <laughs> I'm never going to see you again for the rest of my life, and you won't even let me kiss you goodbye? Corinne! Please. I'll kiss you on the forehead. Uh... Come on. For me. Close your eyes. God. I need him more than you do. Bert, would you open the door? All right, Bert, we're going to pick the lock. We're going to do some lock picking now, Bert. All right, Danny, do your stuff. one thing you know how to do. This is a complicated lock. Yeah, sure. Wait, I got a credit card. Out of here. You can't open a door with a credit card. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, what the hell do you guys think you're doing? The uh, door was locked, Bert. Of course it was locked. I'm taking a bath. Bert, uh, we've been in here for a day and a half now. <laughs> oh, so what are we doing now? Are we turning people in the bathroom? Uh, Bert, I, th I think maybe you should go see Dr. Medlow. You know, talk to him. He's a psychiatrist. Maybe he can help. Yeah, Bert, we think that maybe you're having a slight nervous breakdown. I know what you're doing. I know. I know. If you can convince other people that I'm crazy, then the police won't pay attention to my findings, and that'll make it safe for the four of you. No, Bert, you know, it's not... Come on, What are we having here, a party? No, they broke in. Well, why is the one I'm getting sick and tired of using the downstairs bathroom? I almost killed myself in the stats last night. Okay, everybody out. Mom, Out. Out. 
Did we? See you, Bert. Let's go. Come on. Hi. Oh, Mary, there's something very important I have to discuss with you. Good. Get in the tub, please. Because, darling, I, I want to talk to you. Get in the tub? Get in the tub so we can talk. Bert, I think you should see someone. I think you need help. That's what I want to talk to you about. Get in the tub. <laughs> Darling, you're not yourself. I'm not myself? No. Oh, yes, then who am I? I mean, who, Mary? Who? I mean, if you think I'm not me, who do you think I am? Bert. That's not what I mean. That's what you said, though, Mary. You said, darling, you're not yourself. So naturally, that's what I heard. So then I said, oh, who do you think I am? <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, Mary, if you really think that I'm somebody else, then I think you're the one who needs a lot of help here. So please, get in the tub and let's do some talking. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, if we can't get him out of that bathroom, maybe we can get that psychiatrist guy to come over and do a house call. Well, he's a little naive, Tenny, and I think we got a heading committed. Oh. Committed? Come on, what are you talking about? You're talking about committing somebody, Chuck. I love it. From a man who thinks his dummy is real. <laughs> but, Bert, you're always in the basement. Really? Yes. Am I in the basement now? Well, no. Uh -huh. Therefore, I am not always in the basement. You've been in the bathtub for a day and a half. First the basement, not the bathtub. Mary, please make up your mind what's troubling you, the basement or the bathtub. Was that your foot? Yes. Good, because if it wasn't, there's somebody else in here with us. Good. Darling, sometimes you say things that uh, sound a little strange. Like what? Well, that you're invisible. You don't think I know how strange that is? You do? Of course. Are you kidding? I didn't know you did. Invisible? Come on, Mary. Oh, what? It's ridiculous. Invisible. Who ever heard of anybody being invisible? <laughs> Unless, of course, you have the ring of power. The ring of power? Oh, Mary, please, watch your feet. There's some... Uh, <laughs> What? This ring of power. Don't be silly. Well, that's a relief. Because for a minute there, I thought you were telling me that you had this ring thing that made you invisible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I can be invisible without it. You think you can be invisible? Mary, I, it's the damnedest thing. We see what happens is sometimes I go into a room and people say, hi, Bert. Well, then, of course, I know I'm not invisible. But other times I go into a room, think people can see me, but nobody says anything. <laughs> Those are the times I'm invisible. Huh? I know I don't know how to control it yet, Mary, but when I can, when I can, I'm going to blow this investigation wide open. Can you imagine it? I can go anywhere. I can hear everything. I can see everybody, and nobody can see me. <laughs> I will also be able to get into the movies free. <laughs> Bert, you cannot make yourself invisible. No? No. <laughs> All right. Watch. See me? <laughs> See, I told you. Bert, you're not invisible. All right, where am I? <laughs> right there. Ah, uh, no, you knew that before. I can see you, I can see you. You sure you can see me? Yes. <laughs> it doesn't work when you're wet. <laughs> Listen, Mary, I tell you what. After our bath, while you're making dinner, I'll kind of dry off and blow dry my hair, and then I'll become invisible for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, now. Members of the jury, my friends, 
search your hearts and tell me if you think this lovely young widow, this mother, look at her. I ask you to look at her. Are you looking at her? And if you are looking at her, tell me if you're convinced that she is guilty of this heinous crime of which she's been accused. That was my Clarence Darrow Spencer Tracy combination. <laughs> oh, very good. Now, in your wife's case, Tate, you're in luck. I like it. You like it? I like it. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, what exactly do you like about it? It's almost impossible. <laughs> what? She's got everything against her. No alibi, murder weapon, motive. It couldn't be worse. But, and you like that? I love it. It's a challenge. It excites me. <laughs> if I lose, I don't look bad because they didn't expect me to win. <laughs> if I win, I'm a hero. Ah, it's terrific, Tate. It's terrific. She's almost as good as dead. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm uh, flattered, I guess. Well, we'll arrange to meet her the day after tomorrow. Oh, and don't you think we should discuss your fee? I, I hear that it... I hate to talk money, Tate. I hate it. I see. Uh, well... Perhaps you could uh, write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> Ballpark figure, just to give me an estimate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fee? That's it. You could buy a small nation with this. <laughs> I don't have to recite my record for you, do I, Tate? You remember the Robinson case? She was seen pulling the trigger. There were pictures of her chuckling over the dead body. <laughs> Remember what happened? I not only got her off, I got her damages from his estate. <laughs> I know that you're the best. I mean, I know that. That's why I'm here. It, uh, it's just that, uh, you see, I've had to mortgage the house to raise the bail for Jessica, and uh, well, things are kind of tight right now. <laughs> it's okay, Tate. I understand. There are other lawyers. I'm not the only one. I'm the best, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> So if your wife isn't worth the additional money, it's... Well, I could give you a check for part of it now, and then in a few days, I could give you the... Forget it. A handshake is enough for me. I trust you. Thank you. Because if you ever decide not to pay, I'll see that your wife fries. <laughs> I am really not too crazy about taking this flight. I saw the pilot go by before, and he walked directly into a pillar, tipped his hat, said, excuse me, and got on the plane. <laughs> Senora, no hablo inglés. What does that mean in English? <laughs> See, I don't speak whatever it is you're speaking. <laughs> uh, Miss, Mrs. Tate. Oh, hello, Benson. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going home. No, Benson, I can't go home. I'm flying down to Rio. It was really very nice of you to come and see me off. I've got to get out of the country. They're going to hang me. Mrs. Tate, you're white and rich. They ain't gonna hang you. <laughs> and I am a fugitive. But you mustn't tell anybody. Nobody knows it's a secret. How do you know? Well, I read the note you left. That note was meant for Mr. Tate. Well, I, I read all Mr. Tate's mail. You opened Mr. Tate's mail? Well, I didn't say I opened it. I said I read it. You know, you, you hold it up to the light there, you can see right through it. Isn't that a federal offense? So is jumping bail. Vincent, everybody will be much better off without me. I mean, I am nothing but a burden. I'll probably love Rio. And when all of this murder business is blown over, I'll come back with lots of presents and teach everyone to do the samba. Air Plus Eight Flight 137 is in its final boarding state. Oh. Everyone should be on board at this time. Bye-bye, Benson. Mrs. Tate. Mm? Now, before you go flying down to Rio, I think you should know what happens if you do. What? They keep the bail money Mr. Tate put up. They do? Which means he loses the house and all the savings. So while you're down there on the conga line, he's going to be up here on the bread line. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I guess I can't go. No, that's right. Come on. What's going 
going on? I came as soon as I got your message. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at this. Will you look at this? <laughs> it's all your sister's fault. Benson, you told me to get right over here. Is this why? This was once a nine-pound sirloin roast. <laughs> It is now a little black rock. Benson. A dried up little black rock. Benson, why did you tell me to come right over here? Because your sister's crazy. Well, what did she do? I put a roast in the oven. She decides she's going to Rio. I haul her back from the airport. She decides she's going to move out and take an apartment. Mr. Tate will come home. His wife will be gone, and he'll have a little black rock for dinner. <laughs> Jessica, where are you going? Oh, Mary, I I'm going to rent a small apartment, uh, probably near the courthouses. That's where I will doubtless be spending a great deal of my time. Why in the world are you doing this? Oh, Mary, let's face it. Being a suspected murderess, I am nothing but a burden to Chester and an embarrassment to the entire family. Now, if I were needed here, that would be one thing. I mean, I would still be a burden and a stigma, but I would be a needed one. <laughs> As it is, I am not needed, Mary. No one would even notice if I were gone. What are you talking about? Of course you're needed. No, I am not, Mary. You're needed much more than I am. Don't be silly. I am not. Mary, please, you are. But your husband's going crazy. <laughs> He needs you to look after him. And Jody just very recently tried to commit suicide. He needs to be watched. Somebody was trying to murder Danny, so he needs protection. See? You have all of that. <laughs> what have I got? I mean, my children are never home, so I don't need to take care of them. Benson takes care of the house. Gardner takes care of the roses. There's nothing for me to do. I mean, I did try to do hospital work, volunteer, but they asked me to leave because I cried so much it was very depressing for the patients. <laughs> See, Mary, I'm a completely unnecessary person. I'm... I'm like Eunice's Raggedy Ann doll that sits on her bed. Old and kind of worn out. And nobody even looks at it anymore. But nobody has the heart to throw it away. Because, well, it's, it's just been there so long. Jesse, we love you. People aren't needed because of what they do for you. They are needed because of the way they make you feel. And we love you, Jess. We all love you. What could be a more important reason for being needed than that? Love? I need you, Jess. Couldn't get through half my days without you. Really, Mary? I swear, I swear. Oh, oh, Mary. Benson, guess what? What? I'm staying. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, Benson, perhaps I could be more of a help to you. Well, around the kitchen, for instance. Now, take that roast, for example. You overcooked that. <laughs> Chester, what is it? What is what, love? The bad news. What are you talking about? Chester, the only time you ever bring me here is when you have something awful to tell me because you figure here I won't scream. <laughs> Eat your soup, Claire. How's your car running? I don't know. I haven't used it in weeks. You know, I think we ought to sell it. Why? Well, you never use it. Just sits in a garage for $200 a month. That's a waste. And the money could be put to much better use, right? Right. Like what? Jessica's bail. You want to sell my car for Jessica's bail? Well, I did buy you the car, Claire, and you never use it. And the bail is unbelievable. Now, every little bit helps. Come on, hon, what do you say? 
All right. That's my girl. So you did bring me here for a reason, just like I said. You figured I'd make a scene about selling the car. No, actually, I figured you'd make a scene about selling the apartment. <laughs> what? Well, I did buy it for you, Claire. My apartment? Claire, I have to. The attorney's fee is astronomical. You're going to sell my apartment? And where am I supposed to sleep, Chester? In the car? No, well, no, because you remember, I'm selling that. <laughs> I don't believe this. Claire, Jessica's in real trouble. Perfect. Perfect. For 12 years I've been waiting, Chester. For 12 spare years. Spare me, I... Claire. Spare me the 12 year speech. Chester, if you. I think... didn't handcuff you, Claire. You knew I was married. You chose to wait. But you promised you'd leave her. You promised. Of course I promised. You were blackmailing me. You mean you're not going to leave her? That's right. Well, you were wrong, Chester, because bringing me here is not going to prevent me from making a scene. Finished, Claire? Not quite. Because now, Chester, I am going to report your irregularities to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Perhaps you and Jessica can serve time together. Fine, Claire. Do whatever you have to do. Uh, one more thing, Claire. You're fired. <laughs> Operator, I want the number of the Securities and Exchange Commission, please. Will Bert ever come out of the bathtub? And if he does, will he be all wrinkled? Will Father Tim's retreat in Canada cure him of Corinne? Or will he take up hockey? Will Chester be able to pay E. Ronald Malou's enormous fee for Jessica's defense? And now that Claire has called the SEC, will he have any money left over for his own defense? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of So.